The satire website The Onion says it has bought Alex Jones's InfoWars website and will turn it into a parody of Jones's conspiracy conspiracy show. Jones's website was auctioned off last night to pay the billion and a half dollar lawsuit he lost to the parents of Sandy Hook children. InfoWars claimed that the mass murder that killed 20 first graders and six teachers in 2012 was staged and that the dead children's parents were paid actors. The Sandy Hook parents helped helped the onion by the website. Jones has hoped his supporters would buy InfoWars and allow him to run it. Next month will mark 12 years since the Sandy Hook shooting. The journey has been a long and painful one for the families whose lives changed forever that day. Robbie Parker's six-year-old daughter, Emily, was one of those children, and he has now found strength and reclaimed his voice, writing a book to keep Emily's memory alive, and he joins us now. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Our condolences uh, to you and all of the families grieving. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. So first, I want to get your reaction to the news breaking this morning that The Onion has bought Alex Jones's InfoWars out of bankruptcy. And tell us what it's been like to not only go through this grief, but then to be harassed by conspiracy theorists. No, that's first of all, The Onion getting the winning the auction is great news. Um, that's great news for us. It's great news for just people that don't, um, you know, our intention in this was to make sure that Alex Jones wasn't able to harm people anymore and to deplatform him and to be able to take Infowars away from him. And so it makes it harder for him to cause the harm that he's been harm that he's been causing is a great win for us. And yeah, this is something I've been dealing with for 12 years. I mean, within hours after the shooting, Alex Jones was already on his website and on his radio show claiming that this was fake, that it was a hoax, and started targeting families within days after the shooting. And I started to feel that harassment immediately. I'm so sorry for everything you've gone through. It's really unspeakable. Um, why didn't you initially join any lawsuits against Alex Jones? And what propelled you to finally do so? Yeah, I mean, we just went through this horrific shooting. So we knew exactly what somebody, the harm that somebody could do to somebody else was. and. So when Alex Jones's followers started to harass us, it wasn't just saying mean things about us online. We were receiving death threats. There were other Sandy Hook families that were receiving rape threats and people saying awful, horrendous thing and people attacking us in person and writing things to our homes. So it was a real threat. So the idea for many years about confronting people with this mentality, people that had a reason to hate me in, in their minds, um, wasn't something I was initially ready to engage in. And it took a lot of things and I had to overcome a lot of my own fears and insecurities to get to a place where I could face it and tackle it. And you've said you even feel sorry for Alex Jones? In a way, I mean, when I saw him in court, I, I kind of had this mental image of what that would be like and how that would feel. And when I saw him walk into court and you just see this really worn down, disheveled man with just filled with all this hate and rage and what it's done to him. Um, it did. It caused me to feel pity for him for a time until he got on the stand and he, he did what he does. And um, I had a human moment where I, I, I wanted to put some humanity in him and he, he quickly evaporated that. Yeah, well, that's very big of you. Um, and I can understand you were initially reluctant to speak out. You kind of kept your distance from other Sandy Hook parents. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey and, and coming together with the other parents to support each other? Yeah, the one thing that has been remarkable about it's it's a large group. I mean, it, this is a horrific tragedy and there's a lot of families involved and we've always stuck with each other. Um, we've always been able to support each other in our different endeavors and people who wanted to do things more publicly or privately. Um, it's been a really unified group and it's been amazing to be a part of that. Initially, I, I had a hard time engaging with them. I didn't we didn't live in Connecticut very long before the shooting. And because of the, the conspiracy stuff, I, I felt a lot, a huge burden because of that. And so mm -hmm. I carry that and I carried a lot of shame thinking that it was my fault that all of us were experiencing this level of harassment from everybody, from the yeah. conspiracists. And I know grief and recovery, they don't happen in straight lines. What is your advice to, to other parents going through something similar? Yeah, that's a fair question. And it's hard, it's a hard one to answer because everybody grieves differently as we know. But what I've learned through grief is not to be afraid of it. I was so scared about the pain and what grief was going to do to me and what grief could do to our family. And over the years, as I've learned to open up and embrace what grief is and what it can do, it, it brings healing and it brings connection. It, the grief has helped me connect to Emily still. It's, it's helped me connect to my family and it's helped me connect to myself. It's a wonderful teacher as well. And so I would just counsel people to just be open to the process 
and embrace the hard things and it'll bring you joy and healing at some point in life too and it's hard as well we're seeing pictures of your daughter up on the screen with you and she's just so beautiful and it's it's really heartbreaking but i think those words hold a lot of weight coming from you um before i let you go i want to know about your book and how we can get it sure yeah it's called the father's fight uh taking on alex jones and reclaiming the truth about sandy hook this was my journey of of what I felt like I lost, not just from the shooting and losing Emily, but what I gave up in myself to conspiracists and, and not fighting for me and not fighting for my family in the way that was helpful and how I was able to kind of reclaim that and overcome just a lot of things. And I want people to connect to this because my story might be unique, but we all go through hard things. We're all going through hard things and too many people suffer in silence. And as I've learned to open up and share my voice, uh, I found healing and connection through that, and I want to encourage other people that they can do the same with what they're going through. And if my story helps them, then wonderful. Well, that is so inspiring. I'm sorry for all the years that were taken from you, all the energy spent on this, and, and of course, your beautiful daughter. And we really appreciate you joining us today. Best of luck to you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you.